aboard the Cape Caution. Take a look, Nick. Don't know where it came from. While captain and crew nodded off between strings, the storm was wide awake and delivered a 35-foot rogue wave. I hope that the table ends up again. This is broke off of the ram. That uh, the base piece broke again. Same thing as last time. Oh, the back wheel. Just days ago, oh my gosh, get down! a similar wave laid waste to the Cape Caution's deck, shattering deck boards and damaging the sorting table. Now the Bering Sea has reopened the wound. I don't know why you can hear us fix this, Phil. That's pretty much there ain't no fixing that. Sorry, that's the way we sit back for a couple hours. God. So, I mean the plan was to run these strings and then one more time through the gear, hopefully that would that was gonna do it. But we're losing, we're just losing four or five hours on all the right there. Don't let me don't let me lose sight of that, John. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. John is pretty much unable to perform any of his duties because his hand hurts. Tell me to do something else, I'll do it. I don't know how to screw in deck boards. You're the biggest baby I've ever met sometimes. Man, what a nightmare. What? What do you mean, what? I, I don't know. I said, what a nightmare? Are you not here on this deck that's torn apart that we're trying to put together? That's the nightmare I'm talking about. This is getting to be almost comical with these deck cords. We're not building a Stradivarius. It's stupid to have to go through this over and over on the deck of a crab boat. A deck of a crab boat should be indestructible all the time, no matter what. Well, the guys wouldn't have been on deck. I wouldn't have been sitting here drooling on myself in the chair. It's, it would have been a total different scenario. I don't know how many hours I've been in bed in the last couple days, but why the guys decided to go to bed after eating, I have no idea. Hey, Zach, you want to come up a minute? Come up to the house? Right now, uh, the wheel, the bearing on the inside broke. Who's, I, I mean, just out of curiosity, um, the idea, grab a bite to eat, put some dry clothes on and come out. Where did go to bed come into it? Where did the, Whose idea was that? Who gave that order? I didn't go to bed. I was eating with Dirty in the galley. Well, how come everybody was in bed and they were sleeping, Nick is like, get up, we gotta go outside. People are probably waiting for a bell, or I don't know. I no, was, it was, I get was a eating. bite to eat and go outside. I probably dozed off. But... You know, I'm, I'm not passing the buck on this thing, but I haven't been to bed in a while. I let you guys eat, and the idea was when you're done eating, go outside was the plan. And that's just kind of the byproduct of it here. You know, I'll take part of the blame this, but not all of it on this one. I do stay awake a lot so they can sleep. And I'm fine with it until they take it for granted. Maybe what in his, my dad's mind is if we were out here, he would have had a different course or would have been awake or I don't know. Lost my guy. That's the same saying that I like. Oh, well, I wrecked my car because I fell asleep at the wheel. But the passengers in the back were sleeping, so it's partly their fault. Whatever. Let's get this thing rolling. With very little sleep. Just plug it in, it's all gone. And a very green greenhorn, the weary crew scrambles to get the Cape Caution back to fishing. Well, we just need this for support. Yeah. That's all we need it yeah. for. It's just going to slide, it's not going to roll. Jerry rigging at its finest. That one needs to come out, that one needs to come out. Put him back on. 
the best we got. It's gonna have to work. John, lift up on the table. What's happening, Nick? Oh, we're just getting things buttoned up. Okay. Good. We're done. So I think we might be okay. I got you. Okay, um. Yeah, we got the first one coming up here. Well, what's my fix for everything? Just add crap. All this petty could go away here. We haul these and we get reasonable numbers coming up. Once again, under the gun. 180 miles northeast of Dutch Harbor. On the northwestern. Well, now you got wind that's coming across us. Oh, that's never happened. Oh, I just lost We're in 60, 59 fathoms on this pond. Well, let's see if there's any fishies in here. Come on, fishy. Put it back. That's what we're looking for right there. <laughs> That's money right there. 24. We like that. Fighting 35 knot winds and building seas in the eastern shallows. <laughs> right now, they're already a third through the quota. Oh my God. Captain Sig Hansen and co-captain and daughter Mandy race to claim their piece of the 12 million pound Grey Cod Derby before their competition beats them to it. Want every last fish you can catch. This is a derby. Oh. Oh. Over in the dark. Any damn it? Oh, man, come on. There's a good amount of oil coming out of the turbo. It's getting sprayed right into the intake. We're going to have to shut that down. We're just going to have to rely on the port side for now. And we have power. Definitely an oil leak on that uh, starboard auxiliary. Something with the turbo, Sig. Oh, I'm not a starboard. He's already obviously switched over. Damn it. Like I said yesterday, the load. The load. And I said it. I wanted run the hydros on the one engine and run the chillers on the other. That's the last thing I said. And I said to do it! If it's the load that caused that, then that's just... Oh, I get so mad. We've only got two auxiliaries that can run the chillers. And so now we're down one. And that means you lose the other one for any reason. You lose the fish. You lose the whole load. You lose the trip, everything. Yep. Ah, uh, I just... Uh. With over 100,000 pounds still to catch, and now running without a failsafe, Sig pushes forward on his backup auxiliary engine. Daddy not happy right now. No, no. I did not want well, to. What do you want me to do? I, mean, I know, it's not you two's fault, but I just got my ass handed to it. I said, I'm just a messenger, man. You just got to catch it as fast as you can and go deliver it. Right. But we're down one. We lose the other one for any reason, we're out of luck. Unbelievable. 550 miles northeast. Outside Kodiak. Coming up! Oh, buddy! 
Looks like money. Yeah, buddy. Yes, crab. Dinner happens first again. Aboard the Victory. Fifty-nine. Today's our last day of fishing. I have a total of uh, sixteen thousand and thirty-seven crab on board. We'll get through the gear here, reach my goal of a hundred thousand dollars, finally break even. Last pot, guys. Woo! Oh, buddy. <laughs> Just pulled up like two grand. I'm gonna get a pendant the size of this crab. That's a wrap for Tanner's 2023. Made a little over $100,000. Knock on wood, it's not over yet. Closing out her rookie season at the helm of her late father's vessel, nearly a week ahead of schedule. Hey, Steve. Wondering if there's a chance I could offload. Skipper Sophia Bob Nielsen becomes a victim of her own success, putting her six-figure cargo into a holding pattern until her scheduled delivery. Let her rip! Canneries here just don't have enough processing capacity. I'm looking at an offload date of maybe five days from now. That means we got to nonstop circulate on the crab to uh, keep my crabs alive and well. Water coming out, and it just keeps flowing out. That's why it's just the They're gonna start dying. You have got to be kidding me. The keel coolers are underneath the boat. It's how you chill your coolant and it must be damaged somehow, and it's the only way that the engine would be stuck in salt water right now. Bottom line is, I gotta offload this crab onto another boat. With Cannery's book solid and the vessel's freshwater circulatory system failing, Bob must find her $140,000 worth of bear dye crab a new home or suffer massive dead loss. Hey, how's it going? Oh, my engines are sucking up salt water right now. And I'm just wondering what it's gonna take to get my crab on your boat. Um, I mean, um, as far as weather, what's weather looking like right now? Right now it's really nice. I know it's supposed to be picking up. Okay. We should probably do it the sooner the better. Um, I will, uh, I'll get down there and I'll, I'll give you a shot there when we're leaving the dock. All right, I appreciate all your help. Thank you for being on standby. All right, no problem. All righty. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. 
So I'm gonna pitch all my crab onto this boat. I'm gonna have to hold on to it until my offload date. It's really nice in this guy. Not super stoked. This season's gonna be a huge bust if all those crab die. 